but there wasn't like, I wasn't following a structure. I would go through like the areas, but that was kind of it. It was kind of up to me. And so I see. when I kind of looked back, I was like, okay, well, you know, I obviously was kind of all over the place. So I need to, I need to figure something. I need to have, there's something more that I'm missing and then you had it. Yeah. So. Welcome to episode 103 of the CPA Exam Experience podcast from Superfast CPA. I'm Nate, and in today's interview, you're going to hear me talk with Tyler. So when Tyler started studying for the CPA exams, he actually started with a pretty similar strategy that was mostly based on answering MCQs. And on his first exam, it got him really close, but not quite all the way there. And he had been seeing our YouTube ads all the way through his bachelor's degree. So he decided to watch one of the free trainings, he got our program, and he really found the pro course valuable because it just gave a cohesive approach that included all the different strategies instead of just focusing on one main strategy. So in this interview, you'll hear him describe what those differences were and the different strategies, how it all came together to help him pass his CPA exams. Before we get into the interview, I just want to mention two things. First, our free study training, which again, Tyler mentions this in the interview, but it was the first thing he came across or the first thing that he watched once he decided, okay, I want to see what super fast CPA is all about. And so if you have not watched one of those free training sessions or free training webinars, that is the best place for you to start. You can sign up for one of those on our homepage at superfastcpa.com or the link will be down in the description. The second thing is our free podcast giveaway. So each month we give away three pairs of Powerbeat Pro headphones to three random listeners, people that have entered their name and email into the giveaway. The idea behind that is mainly having headphones. You can be listening or doing CPA study anytime, anywhere using our audio notes. That link as well will be down in the description of this episode. So with that out of the way, let's get into the interview with Tyler. I've uh, listened to quite a few. Nice. Uh, you a golfer? A little bit, yeah. I, I try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I spend a lot of time with that stupid game. <clears throat> I just noticed your shirt. Yeah, I spend a... Yeah, I get a little uh, angry on the course sometimes. So. <laughs> yeah, it's. I know. I know exactly. Um, so you're in uh, your time zone. Are you in Arizona? Yep, yep. Nice. Where at? Uh, down in Tucson. Yeah, I, so. me and my friends usually do like a golf trip in the winter, but not to. Where's Tucson in relation to uh, Phoenix? Is this? It's like below it. Two hours south. Nice. Yeah, that's a great place for golf. <clears throat> so you've heard a bunch of these. So how'd you get into accounting? You mentioned the military. Now I'm assuming you're in accounting. What's what's kind yep. of that story? Yep. Well, I got out of the military and I needed to uh, go to school. So I started in business and I just, I did good in accounting classes and um, you can do everything you can do with a business degree with accounting degree. So with a little bit yeah. more. So I went to accounting and looked up what the best accountant was and that was a CPA and <laughs> that was the goal. So <laughs> yeah, just nice. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's close to, that's pretty much my story was, um, yeah, accounting was like just what I got. A's in without really any effort. It just, I don't know, made sense. And yeah, yeah, like you said, it's more specific than just a business degree. So, okay. So you go to school. Did you jump into studying for the CPA right after school or uh, what? Yeah. So I graduated. Yep. I graduated with my bachelor's degree and then went and got my master's. And then right after my master's, like the same month, I um, started studying for the CPA. So, okay. And when you started, um, you probably just got a review course and started grinding through lessons. Yeah. So the master's degree, uh, the school I went to came with Wiley. Um, So I tried to use Wiley. Um, I kind of scoured Ninja or read it a lot and they recommended Ninja. And so Mm -hmm. I kind of just went into Ninja and used their MCQs a lot. Um, So I, I graduated in October of last year that's pretty much when i started studying 
and I took far the first time in mid November. Um, I don't know if you've heard about the lazy man CPA strategy, but it's kind of like a couple year old post on Reddit, but he's like, I just hammered MCQs the whole time. So that's what I did. Um, okay. I, there's a little bit more strategy to it, but I really just hammered MCQs. I ended up getting a 65 um, in November. And so I'm like, okay, well, uh, my family, we were moving out of the house at that time. So took the holidays off. Um, well, I was waiting for the score and then we took the holidays off. But um, and then from there, I was just like, okay, I need to have more of a plan. I need to, you know, just kind of attack this a better way. And he, you were on YouTube the entire time throughout uh, my college experience. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then I started listening to your podcasts and that's how I found you. So awesome. Okay. So from, uh, you know, from, from what you were trying and then you got a 65, do you remember whether it was on a podcast or maybe our free, one of those free webinars we do, were there any specific ideas that you thought, okay, that's maybe what I'm missing or just any ideas that really made sense to you? Yeah, it was, it was definitely from the podcast. Um, so somehow I, I think it was for, from YouTube. I just clicked on your channel and found the podcast, but um, I really liked how it sounded like you had just a little bit more structure and there was a, a game plan essentially. Mm -hmm. And I really liked how you emphasize utilizing your smartphone. Cause that's what I did. My entire, um, college experience was from my smartphone pretty much. So yeah. I really liked how you incorporated that. Okay. And then I, I didn't even, I didn't look up your account before. Did you have our pro videos or was it just the uh, study tools? Yeah, no, I had, I, I used both. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So when you videos, first got, I thought, yep. I thought the pro videos, they helped me out a lot personally. I feel like just, uh, getting the structure and just seeing the process, how it works. Um, I think that helped. Obviously it helped me out a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, so just to sum up your, uh, so, so after you got our program and you're done now, right? You, you passed, you're yep. done with yep. all four, I, right? Yep. Awesome. Okay. And it, you just, it just started working for you and you just started passing sections, obviously, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, I just, you know, you hear the success stories from, um, you know, from your podcasts and, you know, I, I'm, especially me, I'm like, I've never used flashcards in my life. I, I really don't like them, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to, you know, it's working for people. So I'm going to trust it and I'm going to dive in full bore. And, uh, that's what I did. And it just, it, it, it's crazy. It's like a domino effect and you figure out what works <laughs> for you and it, it just yeah. works. So. Awesome. Okay. So what would, what did like your daily, uh, study routine look like did were were you following exactly what's in the pro videos a two-hour morning session or how'd the whole day go for you uh yeah the first two tests i took it was almost it was pretty exact to the process i'd wake up uh, i i was always an early studier so i always woke up early but it, it's really helped me out to get that out that just that big chunk right out um with the mm. multiple choice questions too so um Pretty much when I first started the test, I would read through your notes. That's the, that's the first thing I do. I would just want to know what I'm I'm looking at. And then yeah. from there, I would do the hour and a half of a, either a, at the beginning, it was a new subject. And then the 30, and then I would just do a 30 question review. And then at the, towards the end, it would just be like an hour and a half of subjects that I was struggling on. And then the, the 30 question review of the whole, of the whole. And then the drives were just filled with audio and then a lunchtime I would have about an hour lunch. So I'd take 30 minutes to either review notes or flashcards. And then the other 30 minutes I'd try to decompress. So, um, and then I would usually do an hour in the afternoon of just either catching up on something I was struggling on or just reviewing the notes. Um, I, I use the notes a lot, um, especially towards like the last two weeks of my process, I would probably read the notes almost once a day just because mm -hmm. it's, that's what you're being tested on. And, and if you can get through, if you can look through the, I feel like if you could look through the notes and recognize everything that you're reading, then you're going to be fine for the test. So, um, and then I would, I, for, I took far and odd first. And for those two tests, I use the multiple choice questions on the phone a lot more. Um, mm -hmm. but towards the end, I started using my flashcards more. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, just curious when you, if you would read the notes from start to finish, how long did that take if you did it all at once? Is that like an oh, hour well, or two hours? Uh, reg was a beast. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that one, uh, that one took a little bit longer and it wouldn't be like, it, it, it would be more, I mean, at the beginning of the process, you're, you have to read the notes. So, mm -hmm. um, but towards the end, you kind of know, you already know what you're reading. So it kind of be like skimming through because it's just, I feel like it's just kind of trying to keep that recollection up. So yeah, I get home and I just read through the note. Okay. This is what that, okay. That's right. This is this. So just trying to, just trying to keep your head above water. Yeah. And you, you're working during this time that you're studying? Yep, yep. So, so um, okay. I was, I, yeah, I work full time. And then I actually passed reg during tax, I'm a tax accountant. So I passed reg during tax okay. season. Um, so that, there's a lot of hours put in there. But yeah. Um, <laughs> but I feel like something I, I try to utilize too, especially with like FAR and, and reg is, I tried to incorporate what I was learning in my day-to-day -day tasks. So that way it was also kind of studying too. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's hard. Like with audit, that was like the hardest test for me because there was just nothing I could, it's something I've never done, just yeah. kind of a new subject. So. Yeah. Audit, is, that's uh, an interview I did earlier. Um, she was, uh, hadn't even, she came up through like insurance, working in insurance, and then was switching over to this role, taking the CPA. So she hadn't done a degree in accounting or anything. And I was thinking like, that is hard. And especially <laughs> audit probably just sounds yeah. so weird to, uh, yeah, if you haven't even taken any accounting classes in college. But not working in auditing, yeah, auditing would be hard. Um, let's see. So I had another question there. So you would, okay, so you would read the notes. Okay, you had, if you were going to jump into, let's say, leases, you would read leases in our notes and then jump into the practice questions in your review course. And from there, just so kind of do only, that. So I would only, so I would only read, so the, the the more morning time was only multiple choice question time. So that was okay. blocked out. Yep. So I would read the notes prior to starting anything. And then I would just do multiple choice questions in the morning. And then, and I do that. The one hour, 30 minutes would be dedicated to a new subject or, a, uh, or something I was struggling on. And then I would do the 30 question review at the, of just everything. Um, mm -hmm. And then, the rest of the day was dedicated to flashcards pretty much and, and reading the notes. Gotcha. And were you able to, uh, kind of have normal evenings for the, in some respects or were you studying oh, yeah. again yep. for like two hours when you got home? Yeah. So I would, yeah. So I do the, I do like two hours in the morning and then have like the 30 minutes at lunch and then kind of whatever I did throughout the day. Um, and then I would do, I would just read through for an hour. So I just gave myself an hour when I got home to read through and then I was done. Um, so it's kind of hard for me personally. It's hard to like, if I'm going to do something like hundred percent of my attention has to be on it. So mm -hmm. it's hard for me to kind of flip back and forth. So what I do, I'd just, I'd either stay at work or I'd go home, dedicate that hour. And then that was it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's nice though, that you, um, you know, you've probably heard me talk about it on other episodes, but if your whole life is you wake up, go straight to work and then try to study four hours every night, especially if you're oh. trying to like have a family, it's just, yeah, life gets pretty miserable pretty fast. Yeah, so. absolutely. And, um, and that's with the weekends, I, I probably only did, I would do about the same amount of time. I think total during the weekdays would be like three and a half to four hours. And then during the weekends, it would, I would only do about four hours too. Um, and then like maybe in the evening I'd flip through some flashcards and read the notes, but, um, usually I try to keep it the same. So, and my wife, um, she loves to, she loves to do activities. So it was uh, definitely a priority in our schedule to, to make sure yeah. we were, uh, prioritizing things. So nice, but she was, yeah, she was amazing though. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, there was something else in your little thing I was going to ask about. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask more about the, what did you call it? The poor man's approach. It's like a famous Reddit post. It's the post. lazy man CPA. It's lazy like a three-year-old Reddit post. 
Um, he's like on it's just this guy saying on I don't know if you type in lazy man CPA like on Google, it'll be like one of the okay. first things that shows up. But okay, it's literally just a guy who did multiple choice questions for like twenty days straight and somehow passed. <laughs> okay, yeah, I haven't. Uh, I don't think I've come across that. Um, and so with that, what's kind of the? I mean, you just do the MCQs per each lesson. I guess what I'm asking yeah, is, so, what yeah. from our program, what was different from that that kind of, you said it gave you more structure or more of a strategic yeah, approach? Yeah, so like, there wasn't. Was the um, so I didn't really like have a, a good strategy. I mean, this is just a guy saying, uh, pretty much from what I got, it's just a post. So pretty much what I got from it and is stop wasting your time on everything and just do MCQs. And so I was, so from there on, it was like, okay, well, I, I shouldn't do that stuff, but there wasn't like, I wasn't following a structure. I would go through, I would, I would go through like the areas, but that was kind of, it. it was kind of up to me. And, and so I see. when I kind of looked back, I was like, okay, well, you know, I obviously was kind of all over the place. So I need to, I need to figure something. I need to have, there's something more that I'm missing and then you had it. Yeah. So no, yeah. <laughs> um, do you feel like the the daily set of 30 just helped a lot with it kind of solves that retention issue? I mean, did you feel like that just really helped? And it's also a really yes, good I think, indicator of where you're at. Yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty crucial, especially I mean, even in the beginning stages, like um, if you're only like two or three chapters in or sections in it, it just keeps that stuff in your head. And I think that's the whole mm -hmm. name of the game is is reviewing and just consistency is more important than knowing the next thing. So if you yeah. can remember what you did last week, it's, it's better than learning one new thing today, I think. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, when you think about kind of the traditional approach, you cover, I mean, on FAR, you know, there's literally over 200 things listed in the blueprints. And uh, mm -hmm. it just doesn't make any sense to spend hours on each one, you know, mastering it for one yeah. day, and then the next day you move on to the next thing and re overwrite your whole short term memory. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's so yeah. obvious when you say it, but it just that's not how most people do it. Right? Um, yeah, I agree. And we talked about the weekends. So when did you work in practice sims? Or how did you use practice sims <laughs> in your overall process? Um, yeah, so I pretty much didn't touch practice sims until the final review, or the, the final review. Um, mm -hmm. I I pretty much stuck to the super fast way of the final review. Um, the two eight hour days was kind of hard for me, so I might have spread it. I might have spread it between like three or four days. So yeah. I'd do like four hour. I would do four hour days essentially. But what I would do is I would pretty much do two two hour blocks of the same thing. So I would do. Uh, just like the morning sessions. And so, and then I would dedicate either the day before or two days before I would dedicate maybe an hour of each to going through the Sims, but I didn't, I just went through the Sims. Like I just went, looked at it. Okay. This is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. What's next. And then if I felt like I needed to work through it, then I would work through it. But I probably went through like 80 sims before each test, but I just wanted to see what they looked like just so I could see what I ex can expect. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, I, I mean, that's kind of right. That's kind of the approach is I think a lot of people uh, on a per chapter basis, you know, generate the sim and try to take it like it's a test, you know, they try to fill the whole thing out and it just takes mm -hmm. a lot of time, especially if you're unfamiliar with it. And uh, yeah, just the yeah. whole idea of reverse engineering them, like looking through, okay, this one's simple. It's classification of depreciation types or whatever. Like, okay, simple. I get that. So that took right. 10 seconds. And then, okay, this one, this is confusing. And so clicking through, uh, reading the solutions and then figuring out, okay, this they're pulling this from this little document or this memo and... It's just so much faster, obviously, to kind of reverse engineer how they work. Yeah, yep, it, it is. And um, I think the one time I might spend time on a sim would be like on a topic I struggled on because they just you work through it more through a sim. But 
I don't know. You're you get you get the same benefit with a multiple choice question. It gives you that answer and it gives you the walkthrough. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the again the the daily sets of thirty. I I end up saying you know, this exact phrase on every episode like my I get sick of saying it but the uh those daily sets of 30 they just solve so many problems like like you said you could make the argument that simulations are really just a more tedious type of a multiple choice question and then doing daily sets of 30 you just get very comfortable with multiple choice questions and you get fast at them and uh and obviously that's what you're going to be doing on test day instead of just spending hours on the uh video lecture hamster yeah. wheel you know yeah. you just you get so much exposure to what you're going to be doing on test day yeah well and that's why i liked uh how, how the super fast cpa i like the structure of it is because it i mean it gives you time like it, yeah it gives you time to hang out with your family but the time that you have to study is the time that you have to study and that's something that worked well with me is I'm okay. This is study time, hundred percent. This is what we're doing. We're, you know, we're not kind of sitting eating chips, watching a video. We're, we're working, we're working through questions. Yeah. So, Ex Yeah, exactly. Yep. I remember that from my first, uh, attempt on far when I just spent eight hours a day watching every video and yeah, it's just, it takes so much time to check everything off a hundred percent in the lessons. Uh, oh, that was my question. So did you stick with using Wiley mostly through the process or was Ninja kind of your main review course as you went through? So I, yeah, I, I pretty much, I would say I used Ninja 95% of the time. It was the only time I would, I maybe did 30 multiple choice questions through Wiley. I just didn't like it. <laughs> it mm -hmm. just wasn't my cup of tea, but they did have really good Sims though. I felt like the Sims in Wiley were, were better than Ninjas. So on the last on those last two days i would go through a lot of the wiley sims okay yeah so you would just and that's kind of yeah how it is I, I mean a lot of people never experience two different review courses but like something like glime glime has mm -hmm. very detailed like very good uh explanations but they go like they make every question really it's like over complicated so it's kind of like okay. it's good practice, but I think it also stresses people out because they're like, is this what yeah. this whole exam is like? Because every topic is the advanced yeah. version. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so did you guys do anything big to celebrate when you got your fourth passing score? Um, well, that was kind of our – so we kind of had a ritual. After every time I took a test, the family would go out and do something. So we'd go out to like the zoo or the aquarium or – um, we'd all go golf and we did, you know, we just, we, that would, we'd have to do an activity after I took a test. That's just had to happen. And then, yeah, we had a little bit of a, we went out to eat and had a little bit of a party, uh, just internally. So yeah. Uh, awesome. It was, it's definitely relieving though. though that score <clears throat> release was, was, was rough. So. Yeah. Um, when did you get your fourth passing score? Was it recently? I think, I think it was June 14th, I think. Of this month, so just barely. You just barely got your yep, fourth pass. Yeah, just score. barely. Yeah. Awesome. So are you still almost not used to not studying every day? Yeah, I my so my dad does ultra marathons and he's already got me in it, so I've already <laughs> signed up for a while. Uh, that is nuts. I meaning what, a hundred miles? Well fifty miles. So he's done so he's done a fifty miler and I pace I uh, like it was like a year ago I paced him for like 15 miles of it. So the most, the most I've ran is like 15 miles. So, and we signed up for a 50 K so about 30 miles. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah. I mean like ultra marathon. I mean, a marathon by itself is just ridiculous. 26 yeah, miles. Yeah. So, so you haven't ran a marathon. You're going to go straight to no, a, I, I haven't ultra ran a marathon. marathon. Yeah. I mean, I've done, I've done a lot, especially like in the military, but the most I've ran oh. is like 15 miles. So I still, yeah. I have a few months to, I'm not, I'm not doing it tomorrow. <laughs> There's no way I can mm -hmm. do that, but um, yeah, I have a little bit of time to prepare. Yeah. Well, good luck. That's, that's wild. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, let's see. So 
talked about, oh, I was going to ask you the flashcards question. So yeah. that was new to you making flashcards, but you yeah. incorporated that strategy as well. Yeah, that was flashcards were a hundred percent new. I never used them. I've never liked them. Um, so when I started using them, it's just kind of like, oh, these are really useful. So I, <laughs> so I probably had maybe 150 flashcards per test, but um, really it was just stuff that I struggled on or stuff that I, I know I needed to remember. Um, yeah. And they're just so easy to flip through too. It's like you're on your phone. You can just flip through them real, just 15 minutes and you're through them. So. Yeah. I, I think that's, it's just absolutely critical. If someone is, uh, emailing me and saying like, I've done everything and I am just not getting a passing score or what else can I do? That's like the first thing I ask him. I'm like, okay, how diligent are you about making flashcards? And do you explain it back to yourself out loud? And do you write them in your own words? And like, if you're doing that, it's easy to watch a video. Well, even read an explanation and tell yourself, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. But then if you see it later in a slightly different format or, you know, it's just easy yeah. to forget little details that could easily be on the test. And if that happens three or four times within the same topic, you want to stop, make a flashcard. And if you put that in your own words, that's going to come to your mind a thousand times easier, you know, than just trying to remember this one explanation one time that you thought made sense at the time. Um, yeah, I 100% agree. I feel like it's also a, it's, it's a customized weak point you know yep. cheat sheet like you you choose what's on those and if you hit your weak points on those you're there you're gonna be good to go <clears throat> right and i i think it's a lot more valuable in that respect than i know that all the review courses now you have all this adaptive stuff and you know you can just generate questions from your weak areas and i think i mean that's like mm-hmm. valuable like you said if you've done it through the whole study timeline per section by the end, you've got your weak areas, but written in your own little explanation. And it's a totally different thing than just generating questions on your weak areas. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you used a digital one, it sounds like. Like Quizlet? Yeah, I used, uh, I think it was Brainscape. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Awesome. And then how would you organize the the decks? Would you just get 30 and start a new one? Or would you try to actually organize them per topic? I like to organize them in the areas, like on the in the four major areas of the test. Gotcha. Is yeah. how I like to do it. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think we went through everything. Was there any uh, anything we missed? Anything that you felt like was another key part of your success that we didn't talk uh, talk about? Um, I feel like the one of the major things I feel that helped me. I mean, it, I think it helped you it helped me a lot was, um, I would read the notes the day of the test. So I would take my test was at 8 AM every time. So I wake up at five, read through for an hour, hit my flashcards and, and then go take the test. I feel like that was vi- like, you don't go to a game and not warm up. So I'm not going to go mm-hmm. to a test and not warm up is kind of how I treated it. Yeah. No, it is. I, and in my opinion, there's all the, just these little things that are all worth yep. five to 10 points. And so if in the last week you do three of these strategies that are worth five to 10 points alone, you know, it's almost hard to not get a passing score. As long as you're, you nailed the process, you know, during it, that kind of stuff right. will fix yep. the happy study process, but it will just add on. And, and that's one of them. That's exactly what I would do. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have our notes at the time I was taking the exams, but my flashcards, Mm -hmm. I would uh, hammer those the last few days, just like what's in that mega cram session video. And then I would also get to the testing center like two hours early and just get through all of them. And, and that was just, you get all your, like you said, all your weak areas, but written in your own words, floating around in your brain before you walk in. And it's, that one thing is worth five to 10 points at least, I think. Oh yeah. Easily. It just, it's, it's so nice walking. You just feel good. Like you feel prepared walking in It's and just put it down. So, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Okay, so last question I always ask, what would be your top, even if it's stuff we already talked about, what would be your top two or three tips to people that are really struggling with their process? Um, one of the biggest things for me on the test was uh, taking my time on the test. The, the first test I took, I, I felt like I rushed the first um, uh, Tesla, and it I feel like I kind of carried through the rest of the tests. I mean, obviously I got a 65, so I didn't, you know, there's still stuff I needed to learn, but um, from every other test, I just took my time. I had plenty of time at the end. I know some people are different, but that was a big key for me. Um, mm -hmm. And then you need to make sure you're trusting the process. Sometimes it feels like, I don't know, sometimes you get in your own head and you're like, am I doing enough? Do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? But just trust, just put your head down, trust the process and it's, it's going to work for you. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the key thing is having a process, right? Like, yeah. I, I think the trap a lot of people fall into is just throwing time at this, like blindly. Yeah, like you said, you can sit in front of your review course and just burn hours press and play on videos, but that's very low impact or whatever. Um, yeah, having a process, and then along with that, did you feel like I don't know by like the second exam or whatever? You, did you get to where you just really felt like I have this process, I have this figured out, like as long as I do it oh, every day, oh, yeah, I just absolutely. know this it is got, working. You end up, I feel like you even, like for BEC was my last test, and I feel like I spent less time studying um, mm -hmm. yeah, pretty significantly. I feel like you just you just know how to learn, like you learn how to learn, and then you're, you're good to go from there. You just get so good at it, so. Yeah, yep. It's almost, it's almost sad there's not like four more exams. Not really, but it it it, it is sad, but <laughs> I'll take it. Because then you, so. <laughs> this thing you spent just months on, you know, hundreds of hours is just done with. But yeah, obviously it's awesome to have it done too. So, yeah. well, that's awesome. Uh, thanks for taking the time to do this. Obviously, people find these really valuable, and I I love hearing people's stories. So, I'm glad I'm glad you found our. YouTube, what was it a YouTube ad you saw first? Oh, you saw them all through college, yeah. you said. Oh, yeah, they were your face was everywhere. So, <laughs> uh, that's annoying, but I guess it, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of the that's kind of the game with I don't know, internet businesses. So, all right, well, well, well uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, well, it you know, it works so, and the yeah. process and the process worked too. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad yeah, it could help. <clears throat> like, if you were to sum it up. What was from what you were doing before? What was the most helpful thing overall that you got from Superfast CPA? The most helpful thing for me was the pro was the study process. That was just learning. Just I don't know. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even say learning. Just understanding how to attack the tests is is key to passing the tests. Mm -hmm. And uh, just from what you were doing before. I mean, I, I mean, I know this, but just in your own words, like, cause review courses don't really come with a whole strategic plan, right? Was that kind of what mm -hmm. you experienced? You're just presented with all these lessons and cause you don't know any better. You operate under the assumption that you just need to learn every single thing in there. Was that kind of what contributed to the first time where it just wasn't really working? Yeah, I think, um, I, I feel like it was a little different for it. Cause I, I've always done things a little bit differently because um, I've, I've hated textbooks. I've, I don't know. I but, um, so usually I have watched videos. So um, so I really just kind of I don't know what what did it for me was it, it just literally just kind of having that structure. Um, not I knew I didn't need to do everything and it wasn't gonna waste time on like reading the book or, or watching the lectures because I. Mm -hmm. I listen to enough of your podcast not to not to know that so um once i had gave far my shot i was like you know what this you know it's this is going to be worth it for the rest of my life essentially is what i told myself and um and so i did it and and when when i do something i have to do it all the way i'm gonna give it a, you know i'm gonna give it a good chance so that's what i did and it carried me through so yeah yeah that's awesome good to hear i'm i'm glad yeah, it could help you. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Congrats on being done. Um, okay. 
Okay, so that was the interview with Tyler. I'm sure you found that very helpful. And if you did, please take a second, share this episode or the podcast in general with someone you know who's also working on their CPA exams. Because these interviews are the most helpful free resource available anywhere for people trying to figure out their own CPA study process. So thanks for watching or listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.